Finally, the reason it got started, we teach literacy by doing. How do you teach reading? You read. If you read long enough, you can read. It's not about, you know, all this fancy stuff, what do you do in class? It's simple. Get them to hold a book. Get them to look at the book. They hold enough books, they read enough books, they'll read. Now, compare that novel, I mean, compare that model with the welfare state model, which is um, applying for a set-aside. You owe me. I deserve. No, no. You earn it. It's a totally different system. Let's go a stage further. Project. Imagine a TV show on how to rise versus a TV show on pathological behavior. One of the real points of the uh, Eberly book, which we're using in this course on, on uh, community and citizenship, and it's a really important point. The theme, one of the underlying themes of the book is when you look at your common culture, what does it teach? If you were a Martian anthropologist and you arrived on Earth and you just turned on American evening television, what would the signals be sent? This would be a great paper by somebody someday. Again, I'm going to give you an example of how you could take this very compacted course and suddenly explode into a range of interesting studies. Look, look at the five most popular sitcoms and just watch them for two weeks and ask yourself, what were the values I would have learned in those sitcoms? They're mostly destructive. They're mostly trivial. They're just silly. So where would you turn in your common culture to say, I'm a very poor seven-year-old, I really, and, and I'm black or Hispanic, and I'd really like to know, how did seven-year-olds who were very poor and black and Hispanic rise? Tell me a show that shows you. I'd like to know what the habits are of being successful. I'm sitting here in public housing. I've got a television set. I'd like to be able to tune on and, and see a show that is entertaining and shows me somebody being successful. Businessmen are mostly people who are conspiring to dump toxic waste in your backyard. Uh, preachers are probably chasing the, the, the leader of the choir. Uh, politicians are probably all accepting graft. Uh, policemen are probably corrupt. I mean, have you, have you looked at the common value systems of the, of the, of the, of the culture on television? And have you looked at what Hollywood does to America by the... And it's not that there's, there's some evil set. It's just that if you're, a normal, if, if you're a normal child and you're trying to get signals, what are the signals being sent you and the thing you're most likely to watch? And what is it you're not going to see? And it would be fascinating to see a show which actually had a healthy church or a healthy synagogue that truly cared about spirituality and actually was helping people. It would be wonderful to see a show about a family working in a mission setting who were actually transforming a lot. You know, what if you saw a show that was positive? In a sense, Little House in the Prairie was in this tradition. And, and the show that, that uh, he starred in when he died. Uh, what was the one about the angel? Huh? How would it happen? I mean, there are occasional brief moments of, of hope in what is otherwise a wasteland of cynicism. Well, let me give you tactics. One would be read rather than getting, going for handout. I mean, if we simply said to everybody wanted a handout, the public library is seven blocks away. And I'm not talking here about people who are without food, but if you talk to people who've lived in the streets, they'll tell you food isn't the problem. There are lots of places in America that now serve as mission centers. The problem is, what do you do in between meals? I'd say read. If you're not willing to learn, you're not going to get there. And we need to say that over and over. Another example, working harder versus feeling sorry for yourself. I lost two campaigns. If I'd spent much time moping about it, I would not be in Congress today. Uh, you open up a small business, it's really hard. The answer is work harder. Learn more, think it through. You go bankrupt, the answer is get back up and go do it again. It's amazing how many first generation millionaires went bankrupt at least once. But their reaction was, wow, what did I learn out of that one? The reaction wasn't, gee, I think I'll go quit now. Another example, learning from others versus complaining to others. If you can't, and this has been one of the keys to my life, I go around looking for teachers. I know I don't know something. Who knows it? Would you please teach me? As opposed to complaining that I'm ignorant. If you'll try to learn, you'll be less ignorant tomorrow. It's a day-by-day -day experience. Another tactic, asking the question, what should I do? I mean, imagine that every poor person in America today had these two choices. We would say to them, ask yourself this morning, what should I do? What the welfare state says is, go ahead and say you're helpless. We'll send a bureaucrat with a check. In fact, the welfare state's structured to punish you if you answer the question, what should I do? I think I'll go get a job. That's illegal. I think I'll save for my daughter to go to school. That's illegal. Look, let's go back to the vision level. I want to argue that personal strength is necessary both for freedom and for a free market. That in fact, you're in a situation where you have to have a sense of being, of being personally strong, both to be politically free 
and to be effective in a free society. Now, let's look at this in a bigger context. A healthy, successful civilization provides at least six qualities of life. These are minimums. Safety, family, work, health, learning, and spiritual meaning. That a civilization, this, no, this is not a government, this is a civilization, the value structure and intellectual framework of your life. And that, that in America, the argument is, would be that the key to providing these qualities is all of us working together with each of us doing our share. And I'm going to walk you just for a second through these, but the argument I'm going to make to you is that personal strength is vital to each quality. That any answer which says, how can I not bear my share of the responsibility and you take care of me, is an answer which probably won't work. Let's start with safety. A neighborhood that watches out for its neighbors is almost certainly a safe neighborhood. And there are studies of this. You can, you can build a hallway entrance. And if you have, I think, it's up to four doors, it's a safe hallway. But if you build a common area that has too many doors, it becomes impersonal space, and the amount of predatory behavior goes up dramatically. But if you create bonding, if you create a neighborhood where people know each other, pay attention to each other, that's why cul-de-sacs are safer than thoroughfares. Because people tend to know each other and tend to watch out for each other. If you create habits of safety, again, those, those of you who, uh, I have two daughters, I mean, but something is, they're now grown, but something as simple as always go out in a group. Now, you know, that may strike you as, gee, you shouldn't have to live like that. In, in, in virtually every urban society in history, women are safer in groups. Now, you can say, well, you shouldn't have to do that. No, you shouldn't have to do that. The question is, statistically, are you safer? Don't, you know, don't be in downtown Washington or downtown Atlanta at 3 o'clock in the morning by yourself, whether you're male or female. That's not, because, you know, that, that's not because you have to live a frightened life. It's just because you ought to be rational about what the risks are. You know, there's, an old, there's an old rule. Don't go, in, don't go into a sailor's bar in New Orleans at 3 o'clock in the morning if you're not a sailor and think you can automatically handle yourself. You're, in, you're out of your league. So you have to have some discipline to be safe. Now, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm not saying that's desirable or undesirable. I'm saying it's real. That American civilization's great hallmark is that it's real. 